What's going on everyone? My name's Tenebris Infinite and welcome back to another update here in Nightingale. As per usual, after seeing a bigger update like 0.3, we now have a minor update, tightening loose ends and fixing a bunch of bugs. From fixes for offline to quest progression, the broken hunter's hat and more. Let's dive into these patch notes here with a quick read through and some initial first impressions. If you enjoyed the patch note coverage, please let me know with a thumbs up or a comment. All your folks' support goes a huge way in not just helping my channel grow, but Nightingale as a whole. But now, without any further ado, let's get into these patch notes. So the patch notes read as follows. Realm Walkers, our server maintenance has concluded and our servers are now back online. Please update your game to ensure you can access online mode once again. The below items will not apply to offline mode until you update the game. It's recommended to restart Steam or Epic or verify your game files to make sure you're on the latest version. The game version shows in the main menu when you start the game. For the change log here, starting off with some bug fixes, in the art and visual department, bound sniper capes colors are now consistent, and bound mortar capes are no longer see-through on one side. For building, buildings should no longer uncomplete when logging out and back into offline mode. For NPCs, all talisman riddles should now be able to be completed. As well, Base Reeves' quests now complete as intended. Then for the player character, players should no longer lose mouse input and the watch after opening their inventory, which that's great to see. Uh, known recipes should no longer appear in the new section when logging back into the game, also really nice to see. Hats that previously were invisible on some body types should now appear as intended. The player should no longer lose their head in some instances of pausing in offline mode. They fixed instances of missing limbs with clothing items such as the Draymond's Ensemble. The shoddy Calcularian pack now equips to the backpack slot rather than outerwear. They corrected a texture on the longer scarf so it no longer shows the placeholder studio logo. And the Hunter's Hat should now correctly apply 5% range damage, rather than 500. And so, as expected, our range damage has dropped by about 20,000 damage. But the thing is, is like this is still such a monster build, it doesn't really matter. And for the Hunter's Hat, uh, it going down to a more reasonable uh, boost is a lot better for the game's balance overall. Uh, so that's great to see. And then for the player character, starting loadout items uh, now have Predator Pelt characteristics, so they can be used to get a gear score of 20. Uh, the Charm Healer plus uh, the Maleficent Minor card combination no longer prevents hunger or rest death. And death markers will automatically remove after revisiting a location. Then for resources, Damage replicates to tree trunks. It should help when hitting slightly outside of the damage area. This one's an interesting change. I'm not noticing anything different with tree chopping, but let me know if you guys notice anything. Then for the UI and the UX, players can now retry to sign in if the game fails to authenticate. They added a cancel button to authentication so players can get to offline mode quicker when there is no access to internet. And then ingredient placeholders have been updated to typed placeholder icons, uh, refined, raw, and wildcard, just giving a little bit more clarification on what the placeholder is. Uh, as well, I'm not too sure what they mean by wildcard, but that's interesting. And then for miscellaneous, uh, the Bastille of Might has a chance to now be found in Herbarium and Gloom Realms. Thank you for your patience and for joining us on this journey, the Nightingale team. So this is a pretty great small update, solving a bunch of issues here and tightening things up. For some initial first impressions, load times still seem to be quite long here, but the smoothing of lag when interacting with crafting from storage and then general lag too seems to be getting toned down, which is great. So first let's make ourselves these new charms, 100 blows as well as the charm of the wanderer. 
And here's our stamina burn while we're just running around. It's about one point of stamina per second. And then our stamina burn while flying is a, a point of stamina every half a second. Then we'll apply Charm of Wanderer. And first for flying, it's uh, it's definitely slowed down. It's slowed down by maybe about 15 to 20 frames here, uh, or like milliseconds. Uh, so it definitely increases the amount of time you can fly. It's not quite two times, uh, but it's still a decent boost. But the real benefit of Charm of the Wanderer here is that it totally gets rid of the stamina cost for sprinting. Which, that is awesome. That is such a great change. Because sometimes, especially in the late game, it's like when you're sprinting and you're flying a lot, that sprinting stamina burn just builds up over time. Uh, so this is just going to be, like, massive for exploration. It also seems to drop the amount of stamina cost it takes to dodge, because that's become a universal cost now. Uh, and then... Uh, we'll apply the charm of a hundred blows and go off and test it out. But as a real quick note here on the stability of things and the performance here, uh, the general amount of lag, especially when large amounts of structures are popping in, has been improved a lot in this uh, minor update here. Uh, so just hats off to the technical team for Nightingale. They're doing crazy good work out here. A small but kind of interesting change here. Uh, throwing knives no longer stick into things. Uh, they seem to just kind of bounce off. Oh yeah, and also uh, Cornholio's here with us too. I don't know if it's the same for public vaults, uh, but yeah, he's here. Bound snipers are looking great too if they just stand still for a dang second. But also Charm of the Wanderer seems to benefit melee attacks too. I'll need to test that one further, but it seems to be a reduced cost. For the Bound Mortars, I'm having a bit of a hard time seeing what changed to on them, but I, I guess I didn't really, like, entirely study them, like, their aesthetics too much, because usually I was just like, ah, he's shooting a cannon at me, oh. All right, but now for the real fun test. Charm of 100 Blows. I have looked forward to using this charm. Very much so. All right, so let's just start slapping away. Okay. Starting to see our damage climb. That's great. 8,000, 9,000. Getting some good crits in there, too. Let's just keep at it. 10,000. Okay, it's back to 9,000. It seems like maybe it's capping out at 9,000 here. I'm not too sure. We are just... Oh, 11,000s there. We are just... Dummy ink. <laughs> Just absolutely dummy. And this isn't even a melee build. All right, man. Another just banging update here. Sure, this was just tightening things up, but having the charms work, all of the community feedback updates, and then the quality of life stuff, which sometimes I prefer them to the big content drops that usually bring about some hiccups, just because the game winds up running so nicely. But Either way, I'm rambling here. What are your thoughts on 0.3.1? Will you use those new charms? I know I will for like all of my builds now, basically. Wanderer just seems like such a necessary charm. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let's get some hype and love for the devs in the comments. So if they see this, they know that we appreciate them. But for now, thank you for watching. And I will catch you all in the next one. Until then, peace.